What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. We are back. Um, today's video is going to be a little different than normal. Uh, as you guys probably know, if you've seen us or if you follow us on Side by Side slash UTV Discussion, um, it's a group we've got on Facebook. You've probably seen that Billy's been out riding a little bit and uh, and I don't think he filmed really much of anything. He might have a couple clips on his phone. So he also did some upgrades slash changes slash carnage to his rig, um, the Turbo S. So we're gonna shoot over to Billy's house and uh, maybe film a video or two with him, kind of updating you guys on what's been going on with his rig and, and what rides he's been on and stuff like that. So a little different than normal, but I think, you know, I think it's content that's better than nothing. So if we didn't film it, you know, you guys wouldn't hear anything about those. We'd jump into the next rides, which I'm actually working on editing now. Um, we jump into those rides, things will be changed with his rig that you guys would have no idea and you'd be kind of confused asking a bunch of questions so kind of trying to fill that void so we are uh we're gonna hit, jump in the corvette which you guys haven't seen yet but you guys will see on this channel uh i'm gonna film a video about that and uh i'm gonna jump in that thing and rip over to billy's house and see what he's got to say let's get it So we're out here at Billy's house. Um, the last video you guys have seen, you know, we're back from Sand Hollow. It's been a while, some time has passed. <laughs> um, just want to update you guys on what what has changed on Billy's rig, which is quite a bit now that we've kind of like stood here and talked about what's actually changed. But um, I guess at this point I'll pass out to Billy and we're gonna see, you guys will see what he's changed. So start off with the biggest, most obvious thing, I guess. Yeah, so uh, I don't know if you guys, well, whoever follows us on Facebook on our UTV, dis, UTV and Side by Side discussion page would probably know a little bit of what I've done, but here we are just talking and it's more than I thought, even myself, it's scary. But first things first, I had my cage kind of reinforced, redone, I guess you would say. So before it was done, I just had these corner bars in all four corners. And there was nothing in the middle, nothing over my head. And you didn't have the windshield. And yeah, yeah, and no V bar. Which I found out I didn't think it was gonna be a big deal in the grand scheme of things when he built it. But then I realized it's like a mental state in my head that more bar is more better, <laughs> I guess. So I had that done and it's made my confidence and mind 100% better. So you, you, I'm sure you guys will notice it in videos upcoming and the video after this, I'm sure, because it'll be after this, I think. Yeah. And <laughs> The order of the videos, it gets weird, so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it ain't with us. But yeah, so I did had that done. Um, yeah, couldn't be happier with it. I'd and recommend. he chose black? Any reasoning? I think it looks sick, personally, but. <laughs> yeah, so it was powder, or powder coated that, whatever it is, gray is and you can kind of see some emerging there <laughs> to get it all redone again powdered i would have to strip the old powder to do it so i got old trusty rattle can out and got her black which yeah. i actually really like too I, I, I do too I honestly it. it looks so sick like but not to mention i've had this debate myself like whether powder or paint is the right method and because like we roll and flop <laughs> these things so much that you can't touch up powder i mean you're done and it doesn't even hold up that much better in no. reality when it you do a, what we're doing. Yeah, you know? it is kind of a good base though because it's like a good primer, which I'll give it that. Yeah. Like, you can still see it, but. But yeah, so I mean, spray paint, yeah, it's, it comes off, you know, with some sticks and stuff, probably a little bit easier than powder, but you also have the exact match color. <laughs> and it can, time. all the time, you just throw a sheet down on your rig. And you can, you know, touch it up if you want. Yeah, and a lot of, I mean, even like a lot of the bars never really get into anything, you know? All you have to touch up is your sides if you flop or roll, you know? Like a lot of it will stay looking pretty nice. 
Like I painted this, it's been a while now. I've had a few trips on it and, and it's just a little bit from flopping it in the trees, but it's, it's yeah. fine. Yeah, don't look bad. <laughs> Another thing that's changed with your cage is no roof panels. How's that going? So I really like that. That's, really? That's sick, uh, yeah. Cause you could, so my biggest thing, so when you're running a low cage, which is obviously pretty low, we all have low ones, but <laughs> you can look up, like, so if you're gonna approach like an obstacle or a ledge or a big hill, you can look out, cause there's no roof in your way. So yeah, like when you're descending like a hill, you usually can't even see right. the other side of the up, so you can look like through it. I've always thought about it, but I could never leave. Look sick. Yeah, they do look sick. It makes it look more like like an actual bouncer, like chassis, I guess, or cage. But obviously, downsides is no shade. No shade. And no rain protection. Yeah, if it rains, good luck. It sucks. Or mud, if you're flinging that poo. Yeah, that does come in a little. Not as bad as you would think, but we are also <laughs> 72 inches wide, so my tires are completely outside of the machine. Or 80 inches wide, like Billy. Yeah, I'm 80 actually, but. Which might kind of bring us to our next point. Yeah. I mean, so, that's about a wrap on the cage stuff. Um, as you can see, it's on some 30 inch horns right now. <laughs> Straight off an old tippy. Stayed, a, stayed with the family. I didn't want to give them up. Justin actually sold yeah. these. <laughs> they originated on the Can Am. <laughs> but I actually found these wheels. Uh, a buddy that I rode with this spring or something had a set. They're five plus two race lines, 14s. So I was just literally looking for a set of wheels just so I could run these big horns for, I don't know why, because stickies are usually better and most that we do, but they, I wanted them, I guess, for like the cliffs. And if I go back to Wellsville, I've been there twice now. If I go back to Wellsville, I'll want to run my big horns. But Plus, I mean, in the winter, I mean, you'd probably run that, yeah, some that. snow and ice. We've noticed that stickies just are not doing good. It all depends on the park. You know, we have a, our local park is the cliffs, and it's always muddy. And when it's in the winter, it's pure ice and snow yeah. usually. And it, the Zillas for sure suck. I mean, we haven't had, oh, you guys didn't see those yet. <laughs> we haven't had those out to try them yet. But, um, or, or even like, like a trap, you know, yeah. like if we go like, we were just talking earlier, there's a new park that's kind of opening up, getting built right now in Wisconsin. So if we were going to go around a place like that, these would be perfect for it to just go rally corners and not have to worry about, you know, stickies that are bigger and I don't know. I, I just wanted them, I guess. I love big horns. <laughs> yeah. I wish they made a 32 or a 33, but they don't. So here we are. So uh, what did you say with this offset? You're 80 inches wide? Yeah. So a five plus two race line, I think is actually a little more, I think it's like closer to four, three. Yeah. But yeah, outside to outside 80 inches wide right now with the five plus two race lines on big horns. Spicy. And these are, these are 30 inch big horns. Right. I don't know if we really mentioned it, yeah, but they're like but, the eight fly ones that came out yeah. of Can Ams. You can only get them through Can Am. And only certain Can Ams, because now the new yeah. ones I think come back with 29 yep. or something, which is so stupid. But um, all right, so what's next? Should we talk about your your other set of shoes? Yeah, I guess we can go. We ain't talking about of, those Nikes. Yeah, there's a lot of <laughs> there's a lot of hype behind these. So what do we got here? So I got a set of uh, 33 Nito stickies, the K Specs. Um, on a 15, so my my same wheels I've been running. Uh, I just painted them black. I don't think you guys have known that either. So I just kind of rail can those two. <laughs> Gave it a new look. The rings? Yeah. Yeah, they're kind of silver these days. Yeah, but... <laughs> they're, they've seen some abuse. But yeah, I, I went with the Nitos. I figured I'd try them. Um, seen a lot of hype behind them. And I've always kind of liked how they were skinnier because of steering and stuff. You know, like if you rode with Zilla's verse the stock um, Coyotes on the, like a Turbo S, you definitely notice the steering, like the, the skinnier tire steers better compared to a wider sticky. So irrelevant, I figured I'd give them a try and I love them. They're probably my new favorite tire. I did groove mine, which should be mentioned. Well, usually these are not here, so they're, they're opened up quite a bit, but. Which will definitely help in the looser stuff where these might not be as great. That's my only thing is, like, I haven't wheeled with him, with them yet, but I just, I don't understand how they could be as good 
in like the mud, which apparently they're doing well, but like yeah. I'm super curious to see it myself because like they don't really have much for for sidewall like bite. You know, they've got these blocks, but you know, in comparison to a Zilla, like they've got freaking three inch paddles yeah. on the side of them. Yeah, so. it's nothing like it's a completely different kind of look too. Like they I'll admit it, they don't look as good as a Zilla on the machine, but man they perform. It's it's they're seriously impressive. I'd recommend them to anybody. Uh, the 33 weighs 46 pounds without the wheel, so they're still a light tire, you know, the, on the lighter side. And it measures 32 and a half with, I don't know, like eight pounds of air in it or something, whatever I run them at. So they're like the perfect size, in my opinion. You know, they're, they're not a, quite a 35, but they're still a little bigger because most 32s measure like 30. So it's kind of like a happy medium. And... Yeah, I've been, I've been super happy with them, super pleased. I mean, I guess that pretty much wraps it up on the tire game. You guys will see more to come on those for sure as the videos keep going. You'll see them out in action, but I'm um, super curious to, to see how they do, you know. I haven't wheeled with them myself yet either, but. Yeah, and that's time will tell, um, you know, getting everybody's thoughts on them and stuff. I have rode them quite a bit with guys with Zillas, newer Zillas and XTRs and stuff, and, and they perform. So you guys will see in the videos. Sweet. And if you guys are new here, you just happen to catch this video, um, check out some of our other stuff. Hit that subscribe button. You know, we're, we wheel pretty hard, um, travel the country as much as we can, riding different parks, exploring them, making good videos for you guys. So help us out, help us grow. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. And uh, on to the next item. What do you got, Billy? Uh, let's talk about, we'll go to the boost tubes. So I got, this is new. I got the AA full like three inch boost tubes, which you can barely see, but basically just that aluminum pipe that goes up and then there's one that goes like into the air box. So I did that. Um, my stock ones were leaking by the, by the throttle body. So I just changed that. You don't really notice much of anything. It's just cool billet parts in there, I guess. I don't really know. So pretty self-explanatory. That's why I did it happy with them they fit good so right. next thing i guess we'll stick with aas those are aftermarket assassins so i also did their clutch kit which is like their full clutch kit so it came with the the helix both springs and the cam arms with like the weights and i messaged them i told them i had gear reduction i'm running a 33 and he sent me what he thought i should get so it's got like a high performance helix, I think, since I have the gear reduction, I, I can get away with that. And he set me up with whatever weights he thought I should need. And it's it's dialed in. It's I, I I couldn't be happier with that setup. It's it was dead not straight from the guy. He just messaged me what he thought it would be and it's been perfect. Um, you can really tell a difference, like takeoff, low speed, and even like wide open throttle. It really puts the power to the ground, which I was skeptical about, but it was a big, it was a big change, and I'm I'm really happy with it. So, what was the reasoning to go from the stock clutching? I just wanted to try it. That's basically it. Okay, I didn't know if there was like complaints with, which kind of I mean you notice know the difference between Josh's and yours, right? Yeah, so it was Josh where it all originated. The, yeah, Josh's being the 21 that has the different primary and secondary. When I drove it in Sand Hollow, it was like the engagement and everything was so smooth and i'm like man I, mine's like not like that like even with gear reduction it still seemed like it was jerky so i wanted to try to remedy that and i i think i did it it, it works it works really good without having to change the entire clutching system i guess figured i'd try this first and, and i'm happy with it all right sweet what's next <laughs> the list continues <laughs> yeah um yeah we'll go to the billet hubs i guess so I, well, you kind of see that one. So I went with the billet rear carriers. Um, the reasoning I did that is when I rode s'more, I actually broke both carriers. I don't know how, but they were broke when I got home. <laughs> so it just pushes out. I don't know if I have one laying around. I don't know. We'll show you eventually, but there's just like where the bearing, where the bearing goes, there's a big C clip. And if you like side load it super hard against something, it'll push that C clip out, like try to push the bearing out basically, and it cracks like the 
I don't even know what you'd call it, like the groove that the bearing sits in. So both of mine were cracked. So I figured instead of putting stock ones back on, I got these, they're Super ATV billets and they're actually very reasonably priced, reasonably priced. And yeah, I've had, I've had great luck with them so far. I've got probably three or four trips on them now and they've been holding up. The fit and finish was really good. Like. I'm I'm actually really happy with with that product. Lifetime warranty, you know, it's, you can't really beat it from Super ATV. They're literally half the price of the other brands that build them. So I'm pretty happy with those. Right, and time will tell for sure. I mean, we'll give it to you straight. You know, if if they fail, you guys will know. Yeah, yeah. You know, there's sure. a big train behind Super ATV. Hate them, love them. You know that whole deal. So. We're here to tell you how it is. Yeah. Right. And uh, and we'll let you know. So he likes them so far. But. Yep. It's pretty pretty, you know, a simple piece of technology there. It's just a piece <laughs> of billy, you know, so how much can you really mess up? Yeah. Alright, we'll be back. Alright, so what's next? So next thing you can't see it, but I went with back. So I was running the Sandcraft carrier bearing. It's hiding in there somewhere. Yeah, it's underneath <laughs> all that mumbo jumbo. So I was running the Sandcraft carrier bearing. Um, I never had any issue, real issues with it, I guess. Um, mounting it in there is a, a pain, a real pain. Don't, it, it was a horrible day. <laughs> <laughs> and so I put a stock one back in and the reasoning behind that is the stock one just bolts in from the top, super easy. Um, yeah, I mean, it's just, it's way easier, simpler to, to take out, put in it. Like if I blew my diff out on the trail, it takes two seconds to get the, the carry bearing out instead of fighting it with eight millimeters that are like underneath your skid plate and stuff so that's the reason why I switched to that I'm happy this is my o OEM like OG carrier bearing back in this thing and I haven't had any issue with the you know build drive line built drive shaft like I've never it's still it's still great so that's the reason why I did that so ease of maintenance that kind of brings us into our next point yeah <laughs> why are you worried about Ease of switching your diff, Billy. So, uh, how can I even start this? So, they know about one, I think, yeah. The blown diff the first time? Yeah, the, they know about that one. Yep, so. And uh, that's when you changed your carry bearing on the trailer, kind of spiraled the whole yep, carry yeah, bearing thing. Yep, and it was a huge pain. Took us like six hours Yeah. to change the diff on the trailer. And and I think three of them hours was the carrier bearing. <laughs> Fighting so that, yeah. That's the reason why I went that route. So so then the next one, um, which you guys will see more about this in the next video we're about to film. And uh, there's clips of riding and stuff from the trips that he went on that we're kind of going to compile together. And uh, and that'll be in there. But um, that one was from S'more? S'more, yeah. So... Before yeah. S'more. Yeah, I guess before S'more, I wanted to try something with the front diff, so I bought a spool. So basically that makes it four wheel drive all the time, strongest of the strong. There's no like, like all this stuff that comes in them. There's none of all this garbage in there. It's literally just a big billet piece of steel that weighs like 10 pounds. It just chills in the ring gear. So I put that in it and I, I actually don't mind it. So it's been it's been good. I did break the pinion. So that's obviously your next weak point in an RS1 diff. Yeah, so, so he spooled one. it. If it's hard to follow along. So he blew one diff in Alabama, which you guys seen on videos. If you haven't seen it, go watch the Alabama Adventure. It's, it's piled in there somewhere. Um, he blew that diff. That was a stock RS1 diff. And what happened to that one is this. Yeah, so it just cracked the ring gear, broke this plastic junk, and then the, this cage is all crunchy too. I don't know where, but it's like cracked and broke. So that was all the stock RS1 div. After that, some point after that, went spool, and that's when yep. the next and carnage it, Yeah, occurred. it just went spool just to try it basically and to see, because there's not many options out for an RS1 div. I am in the process of going to be trying some different things, so we'll, we'll have more on that later. But I put the spool in it and took a lick. Took a lick, and that's what then. That's when this happened. So, so this I, is the pinion shaft itself. So it didn't break the ring gear. 
Nope, didn't or, break the ring gear, the didn't spool. break the spool, didn't break anything, it literally broke the pinion. So And? Oh yeah, and I blew out <laughs> low gear in my transmission. So it was a good right. look. You'll see it in the next video. So if you made it this far in this video, stay tuned for the next one. There's some some good action. <laughs> that one's basically just gonna be an action cut video. So some of you guys like that stuff better anyways. So um, yeah. it'll be in there. So yeah, so then I blew the low gear out in the trans and now it has cryo heated trans gears. So mm -hmm. if you're doing gear reduction, you might wanna just buy, if and you ride hard, like hard, hard. I mean, it was a lick, but I, I don't know. We ride hard. So <laughs> if you're gonna ride hard, I would recommend just buying the cryo heated gears right from the get go. Cause really they're not that much more than just buying the gear reduction gears themselves through straight through Polaris. And they are OEM gears. They're just the cryo heated ones. So after I did that, I haven't had any issues, but I also probably haven't had a hit as hard as that yet. Cause I'm still running the spool now with just the normal pinion again. And it's, it's been holding up. So that kind of wraps up the diff top for now. Um, like he said, he is going to try some things uh, with some different parts, but we'll probably make that a video in itself. And uh, hopefully Josh blew a diff at Sand Hollow. You guys should know that if you watch that series, if not, check it out. But um, we swapped his diff out too. There's not going to be a video about that or anything, but we, he did just put another OEM RS1 diff in that rig and uh, hasn't tore it down or anything. So. I think at some point Billy's got enough parts compiled that are good. <laughs> this one broke that one. It's almost like the YXZ days again. Yeah. So I'm sure we'll get roasted much. for that. But here at Blown Div Off Road, what do you expect? You know. Yeah. Well, when you ride ten times harder than you did in the YXZs, I mean, it's Oof. to be expected. <laughs> you guys might not think we do, but we really do. Yeah. We kind of laugh at some of the stuff we used to think was really hard in the YXZs, but we did hit some stuff that was hard. Just yeah. Not, it's like a whole nother level. You know? Yeah. It's it's weird. So, anyways, yeah. We'll probably make a video tearing Josh's RS1 diff down and throwing one together. Kind of, if you guys seen the Smart Lock breakdown video, similar to that, kind of explain how they work to the best of our knowledge. Definitely no Polaris engineers with the <laughs> voodoo they got going on, but uh, we'll do our best. So look forward to that video. But for now, I think we just got one more thing that, yeah. that has been changed. One more change. Yep, still just one more change. So I went with the Trinity. Uh, Steiner exhaust, which I actually only have one ride on it now, which is coming up in the next two videos, I guess, and love it. That's if you like loud and like good sounding exhaust, I, I really, I really would recommend it. It sounds really good. There's yeah. Not really much else. She barks. It. Yeah. It's it's fun having. Like I never thought I'd want a loud exhaust just because I didn't want to listen to it all the time, but. It makes me just want to get in the throttle a little more and it's it's just it's like fun it's like a new new thing so that's yeah i think that's about it for everything that i've changed on my machine all right cool well thanks guys thanks for watching stick around um follow us on facebook i think we most of us post in the side by side utv discussion group um pretty cool thing to follow otherwise we've got a page we've got an instagram so Follow us there to kind of get the inside scoop on some of this stuff more often. And uh, yeah, hit that subscribe button and we'll see you on the next one.